Now I know when we talk about Catskill fly tying, we're pretty much always talking about dry flies, but that's not all they've tied up there in the Catskills. They've got some pretty good nymphs too. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now, Harry Darby, that's who we're gonna be tying today. A lot of you have probably heard of Harry and Elsie Darby from the you know, 1920s or 30s, pretty famous Catskill fly tire and pretty famous for his dry flies. He was active up there in the Catskills pretty much the same time as Walt and Winnie Dent. And those two, along with Harry and Elsie Darby, did call Rube Cross as you know one of their inspirations. And we've talked about Rube Cross on this channel before. He's uh, also another dry fly tire, but he's got some pretty famous nymphs. The carrot nymph, that was his, the carrot and black. We tied that for the channel. Pretty cool looking nymph. So anyway, this pattern I'm gonna be doing today, it's called the Darby Stonefly. Now I first saw this pattern in a fly tire magazine article from the fall of 2013 by Mike Valla, actually called Catskill Nymphs. And it's a big golden stonefly nymph. I know when we think about big stoneflies, you think out west, out Colorado and Montana, the big rivers. But there's some big stoneflies here on the east coast too, particularly up in the Catskills and Delaware River. They've got some, some of these big golden stoneflies. So this pattern can be tied pretty big, up to a size six or so. I'm gonna tie it on a 12 because I'm probably not gonna be fishing up in New York anytime soon. I'll be fishing it here in Maryland. Now, aside from the pattern being in the Mike Valla uh, 2013 article. It was also in David Klaus Meyer's 101 Favorite Wet Flies and Nymphs that we just reviewed recently. Now this fly is not the easiest one to tie, but it's not really all that complicated. It does have a couple of components that everybody might not have. It calls for amber seals fur for the body. So not many of us have that. Pretty much just use any kind of coarse synthetic that you might have. And the two back pieces, you know, the carapace you see on the, a lot of stone flies, it's actually tied with uh, jungle cock eyes. So if you don't have that, a substitute I'd probably use there is just some kind of, I don't know, a, a lighter colored turkey quills just tied on one on top of the other. I mean, I think you can make an effective imitation with those substitutions and it's a pretty cool looking fly. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, Darby's Stonefly Nymph. Pretty much a golden stonefly imitation. So this guy can be tied pretty big. Uh, as small as a 12 and up to a 4 if you have some really big stone flies in your water. I'm tying it on a size 10. It's a 2x long barbless hook. and I'm using brown thread. I'll lay a base down to the start of the bend. And the tail on this guy, two pheasant tail fibers. That's two. They're still stuck together. I just try to roll them in my fingers till they break up on me. Okay, now let's just catch these on right on top. And it's kind of long. I'd say about a, a hook length long, like a, a lot of stoneflies have a pretty pronounced tail. And one thing you can do, I don't always, I just try to pull them apart, but get your, le your tail spread apart and then put a, just a drop of super glue or UV resin on it right there, because they might, you know, get stuck back together later in the tie if you're not careful. I'm not gonna worry about it, I'm just gonna try to be careful. Okay, now the rib on this is, um, well, the original was a brown monofilament. It's probably because they didn't have this vinyl. So I'm using a brown, rust-colored vinyl. It's a D-rib, and this is a nymph size. And I'm gonna catch it in with the round side. You know what? Let's go up front so we can get a little bit of bulk to the body. So I'm going to catch it in right there and then just use that to help build a little bit of the bulk on the body. Keep it parallel to the hook as you bring it on back. Okay, and I think we're going to be fine right there. See those tails are already kind of sticking together on me told you I was going to be careful and I wasn't careful enough, but we'll be okay. All right, definitely want to put some wax on your thread for this next part. I am using a, an imitation seal fur. It called for an amber seal, the original pattern. Of course, nobody really has seal anymore, so some big um, 
kind of coarse, kind of spiky dubbing blend. And this is a, the imitation seal in amber. So I'm trying to stick with the original as best I can. And we've done a couple of flies like this recently. And sometimes this thick stuff is easier to put in a dubbing loop or use thicker thread and, and split it. I'm not going to this time because we have a really thick rib, which should help uh, lock some of it down. So just put it on as tight as you can. And after you get a couple of wraps laying dubbing, you can try to spin it just a little bit tighter. It's still kind of hard to work with, but I'm gonna take it all the way up front and I might come back down again just to get a little bit more of a taper, more of that stonefly kind of look. So yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit more on there and then take it down and then back up just to get a little bit thicker and more of a, not a cigar shape, but, but thinner toward the back and thicker toward the thorax, like that kind of shape. And let's go just a little bit thicker up here on the thorax. I told you it's pretty buzzy, buggy and fuzzy. Now let's just wrap this rib. And I caught it in with the round side toward the hook so that when I'm wrapping it, you'll see the, the D side, the round side up. And I think that will look just a little bit better make it look a little bit more like the original. So three or four wraps should be fine right there. Let's go ahead and catch this vinyl rib off right here. Two or three tight turns before we snip this. Okay, now I'm going to put just a little bit more. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to put the the first um, back piece on, which is the, the jungle cock. So we want this probably to reach about halfway down the fly. So I think that is gonna look fine right there. Let's just try to catch this in. Couple loose wraps, check your position. Laying flat back like that, that's what I want. Now a couple more wraps to lock it in. We'll snip this off, then we'll go back to another little bit of dubbing so that when we put the next back piece on, it will give it a little bit of separation. So let's just put some more wax on right here and then a little bit more of this same dubbing for the thorax. Now let's put the next little jungle cock eye on, lay it on top just like we did that one, but with that dubbing underneath, we'll we should have a little bit of separation right there. See that? That will look good if I can get that on right there and get it to stay. So two wraps, don't let it spin around on me. And it's wanting to spin. But there we go, they're laying on top of each other pretty, pretty well right there. So let's go ahead and, and get that, eh, that's fine. No, you know what, I'm backing it up because that spun around too much. So just kind of hold it tight and a couple of tight wraps. There we go, that one looks better. All right, now let's snip this excess. And we do have some legs on here. Just a partridge. If you don't have partridge, any kind of really thin, small, I'd say brown, soft hackle. But I do have a Hungarian partridge right here. And you could just take the some fibers out and tie it in as a throat. Or you can just try and do a collar. I'm gonna do a collar here. It's only gonna be about one wrap. Doesn't want to cooperate here. Okay, there's two wraps, got that on. I haven't messed, mangled up my top too much. Did spin that one around just a little bit, but we can fix that. 
Okay. Now I'm going to snip that front piece right here. Now I have not done the best job with getting this partridge tied in. Got a couple fibers going forward, I got a couple trapped, and I should take my hackle pliers, but I'm not going to because I'm kind of crazy that way and I'm only putting one wrap. So let's just try to catch this in. Now snip off this butt and I'm gonna bunch all these up and then just try to push them underneath his legs. So another couple of wraps right there. Try to bunch these up. So you can see why it might have been easier just to tie these legs in as a throat. But we made it work. So work on your head, get you a good sized nymph head here. And there you go. We've got some legs coming off the sides and the bottom. And then we see our back piece. And what I would probably do right here, just trim off a couple of these on the top. So now our, our legs are coming off the sides and the bottom. You can still see that back piece. So I think it's ready for a whip finish. And we're going to have some cleanup on this because this seals fur or imitation seals fur just does get all over the place. And see, you got these long guys right here. Let's just trim some of this out. Work your way around, kneading it up however much you want. Spend as much time on it as you want or just put it in your box like it is. So there you go, Darby's Stonefly Nymph. Pretty cool looking golden stonefly imitation. Drop of head cement and this thing's going in my nymph box. So that's it everybody, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.